Okay, so I'm going to show you how to go about setting up a template for something that is full bleed and you will be trimming down later. So essentially we need a smaller shape with some guidelines and tick marks for trimming on a bigger piece of canvas that's the bigger piece of paper. So let's take a look at business cards for example. Now if you take a look at the site, it lists three measurements. There is the smallest measurement, which is the live area that indicates a safe area for putting text. There's the trim size, which is the size that the card will actually get trimmed to. And then there's the bleed size, which is how far the ink has to go beyond the trim edge so that there's not an accidental little white line around the edge of the thing once you cut it up. The easy way to do this is to actually start by making your canvas your smallest measurement size. So go to File and choose New. And we want to make sure our resolution is at 300 dpi because this is a print product and the color mode is at CMYK. And then what I want you to do is enter in the smallest measurement, which is the live area. So 3.25 by 1.75 inches and uh, then click OK. And there you can put guides on these now by clicking and dragging a guide out from the ruler. So I'm clicking on my ruler and dragging and line it right up to the edge of your canvas. Now on mine, I have a snap to feature turned on, so you'll notice if I drag it close, it'll suddenly pop in. That's very handy on this tutorial, so I want you to make sure that's turned on on yours. Go up to the View menu and choose Snap. Make sure that there is a little check mark by that. And then drag guides out to all four edges of your canvas, and we'll do this several times. Okay, so that's our safe area. Now we need to change the canvas size to add another eighth inch all the way around what we've already got. So go up to Image and go to Canvas Size and change it to the next size, next bigger size, which is Trim. So 3.5 inches by 2 inches. And make sure that this little dot is in the middle. Now if this checkbox was on, you want to uncheck that first. It should be off, but on the off chance that it is on, um, uncheck that and then change your measurements to 3.5 by 2 inches and then click OK. And that added evenly more space all the way around. Now grab more guides and put them along the edge. And at any time, if you get a little lost, just pause the tutorial, catch up, rewind, whatever you need to do. Now we're going to do this another time. Image, canvas size, and enter in the last measurement size, which is the bleed, so 3.75 by 2.25. Okay, if you got online and took a look at any of those websites that offer to print business cards, this is what you would build and submit typically. They would ask for an eighth of an inch bleed for the size of the card and then ask that you keep all the text inside the safe area, which is this inside area. You don't want any text going between there and the trim line. You could create these files and save them up to the website either as usually JPEGs or what are asked for or a PDF or even sometimes a PNG. Um, but what we're doing is we're printing out kind of samples so we're not printing them as actual business cards we need to print them on an eight and a half by eleven piece of paper. So let's add one more set of guides to one to each corner Go to Image, Canvas, and change the size to 8.5 by 11, and hit OK. Now if I zoom out, you can see that's right in the middle of a big piece of paper, which is really a waste of space. So right now we're set up for one card. What I'm going to do now is use some of my tools to create outlines on each one of these and some tick marks so that I know where to create color and then I can move that around the canvas for a couple of copies. So create a new layer, grab your sh rectangle shape tool and set the fill to zero or nothing, it's the one with the red slash through it, and set your stroke to black 
and your stroke needs to be at one point wide. You don't want it any wider than that. And the first one we're going to set up is all of the stuff for trim, which is the most important. Now trim is going to be the center line that we set up our guideline. And uh, once you've created a rectangle, name it in your layers panel, trim. Okay, now let's do this really easy. Copy that one, Command J, Transform, Command T, and then hold down Option and just drag out to that next corner and hit OK. And let's set this one at 50%-ish percent, percent and name it Bleed. And let's do one more, so Command J, and Command T to copy and let's put that on the center one. So obviously it doesn't really matter which order you do those three in, just as long as you end up with a line on each one of those guidelines and you have a safe area, which is what we're going to name this one, a bleed and a trim. Now these are all black and that's not particularly helpful. Um, let's color code them a little bit. Let's leave the trim black. Let's change the safe area color to a blue and uh, let's change the trim color to a pink okay so if I wanted to see these without my guidelines covering them up I could hit command H which is you can remember hide and if you've never done that on your Photoshop before you may get a message saying do you want to hide Photoshop or do you want to hide the extras Choose Hide Extras and you will never see that message again and it will behave the way you expect it to when you're following these tutorials. So what we need now, um, oh you know what, I ended up with my lines reversed. Okay, if you followed me blindly, don't do that. Let's, uh, here we go, Trim, there it is. Trim, I'm going to change the color to black, which is what I want and my bleed layer is going to be pink. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to mislead you. We need to put tick marks or trim marks on this and that's so that when you have these printed out and you've got a ruler and an exacto knife you can lay it down on top and trim from one side to the other and not have um, there be any irregular edges. So we need our guidelines back. Hit Command H and make a new layer, name it Tick Marks, and come over to your Tools panel, click on your Brush Tool, and choose Pencil. This is really the only thing in Photoshop I have honestly ever used a pencil for because it creates a really crisp edge. Now your brush size, you need it to be, um, or your pencil size, you need it to be pretty small. So I'm going to right click and set mine to be just one pixel and see how that fares. That's really small. Let's do two pixels. Yeah, that'll be perfect. Okay, so what you're going to do is put a trim mark on this center line about a quarter inch tall, just a little outside of the bleed area on all of the corners. So if you hold, click once, hold shift down and drag, it will create a perfectly straight line. And I got a little bit of a goober up there because I didn't let go, my coordination wasn't great. So I actually let go of my shift before. I um, let go of my mouse. So let's see if I can do a better job on this next one. Yep, that was better. So I am just holding down spacebar and clicking and dragging to pan around on the page. Ugh. Command Z if you do something like that. That just means that I held shift down because if you hold shift down it'll kind of connect the dots. So I'm clicking once, holding shift then, and dragging. And then I'm going to click once over here, hold shift, I keep doing that, I do apologize. Click once, hold shift, and drag. In my defense, I'm actually using a mouse trackpad and it's kind of a new tool for me, so that's what's going on. Um, 
Continue doing this to your other corners until you have all of them completed. And since this is for your personal project, these ticks don't have to be a specific length. If you are doing a project that will be printed on a large scale commercially, you may want to check with whoever your printer is and ask if you need to add things like trim marks. Sometimes they don't want you to add your own trim marks because they have a special way that they do it. So you may just create a file like this looked like before we expanded it to the eight and a half by 11 size. Um, there we go. So if I hide my guidelines again, Command H, there's my template. Now this is a lot of little pieces and I really only need one layer. So I'm going to grab the bottom one, trim, hold down shift and click on the top one, safe area, and then hit Command E to merge them where I think, let me see, if you right click, you can choose merge layers if you're not comfortable with shortcuts. And that is the template. So I would say let's drag this one up and then copy it, Command J to duplicate that layer and then drag that one down and that will give you a front and a back. Okay, that is pretty nifty. That is how you make templates. After that, I would design so that all of my color reaches out to this furthest edge. In fact, what I would probably do is keep this layer, call it my template, and then lock it. And that way it will stay put, you can't add to it or move it accidentally, and then I would build all of my new layers below that layer so that I could see what I was doing. And I'm gonna click and drag and fill that area with color, clear out to the bleed, And if I put text on this, for a business card, you want the name of whoever the business card belongs to to be the biggest thing. The text needs to stay inside of that safe line, that middle line. And when you add the contact information, that needs to be no smaller than eight point. I know there's some really small type out there, but people have a hard time reading anything that's smaller than eight point. And you need them to be able to read it because that's kind of the point of a card. And I'm just gonna kind of fill in some stuff here, phone number, fax, email, uh, maybe even website instead of fax, because that's starting to get really outdated. So I'm watching my type sizes, and 8.83, so about a 9, is actually a pretty good size for a business card. And then I could put a graphic over here. Now here's something to keep in mind. Business cards are often needed... You often need to write information on them. So it's a very good idea, one, not to choose a really slick, shiny paper stock. Pick something that's heavy but is matte and would easily accept a pencil or a pen. And then leave a good portion of one side of your card white. So perhaps something I could do on this is maybe just put the website on the back and maybe a small version of my graphic. And you can look around for different card um, ideas. There's lots of them out there. Some of them are extremely creative. Um, keep in mind a business card, if this is what you're specifically looking at is to create a business card, is a very small representation of what you do and what your business is. And so you want to make sure that the graphics you use and the text you use conveys kind of the same information as the rest of your materials for whatever it is you do. For example, you wouldn't want to get really, really grungy textures and really, really creative fonts on there if what you do is modern high-end industrial furniture. Those looks don't go together those looks, the looks for modern industrial furniture would be more streamlined and minimal. Um, so take a look, do your research, and then design your card. Once you've printed it out, what you will do to trim is take a ruler and line your ruler up right on the edges of um, 
of those little trim marks. I'm gonna see if I can show you just here since I don't really have like a video camera to show you really what I would do. Um, so here's our, our fake little ruler. I would line it up um, and have I'd have my nice sharp X-Acto knife ready. If I put my tip of the X-Acto knife on the top tick that I'm going to cut first, I can butt the ruler right up against it and then easily line it up to the bottom one instead of free floating trying to line these up. Brace it really well and then drag your X-Acto knife, not from the very top of this paper all the way down. So you don't want to make the mistake of doing this all in one cut. The reason why is if you do that, after a cut or two, you will lose the rest of your trim mark. Something will fall off. So trim within the trim mark. So I would cut from about the top of this trim mark down to the bottom of that one and then do each side and that way you'll be able to use your trim marks until the card is completely cut out and it will have very fresh clean edges. Something to remember when you're trimming is to use a fresh knife. So I actually really like instead of those cute little um, craftsy exacto blades that are a long triangle, I like the industrial cutters that are um, the smaller ones, so the small exacto. In fact, let me flip over to my internet and see if I can pull up an image of what that actually is. And you can see, so it, um, let's see, box cutter maybe. It's this type of knife right here. Um, there's the big ones and the small ones. I like the small ones. And the reason why is the blade is actually notched so that when the first little bit gets dull, you can, um, see, you, I don't know if you can see it on yours. There's a little notch there. When the first little bit gets dull, you can actually break that off and have a whole new fresh blade. So you don't have to buy a bunch of replacement blades or have a bunch of big scary razors floating around. You just have a little broken off piece that you need to be careful with. A great way to dispose of used razors is to actually take a piece of scotch tape and tape it around it and then just throw it in the garbage. Um, anyway, so that's how you not only create a template, but then once it's printed out, how you would trim it away and uh, yeah, have fun designing some business cards or whatever you're building templates for.